we're going to have a look at the development of world order over time. So we're going to start off with the League of Nations. Some of you may have heard of the League of Nations, particularly those of you who do modern history. history. Yeah. Um, so the thing to know about the League of Nations is that it came into being after the end of World War I, or the 1919 Treaty of Versailles. That's one of the... You probably don't need to mention that it's a good answer in an essay. Um, but something to know, that is the treaty that brought the League of Nations uh, into force. Now, its task was simple, to ensure that war never broke out again. Um, and after the turmoil caused by the Versailles Treaty, many looked to the League to bring stability to the world. So after the Versailles Treaty, also World War One. Yes. Don't you love how America would want to propose the League of Nations, yet they still couldn't pass the treaty? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. One of the shortcomings, or uh, there were a lot of shortcomings of the League of Nations. Okay, and that, the idea of the League of Nations was in case of a conflict, there were three things they would do. One, they would just get them to discuss the issue. Um, two, they would impose sanctions. And three, they would impose military um, sanctions. So, economic sanctions and then military sanctions. Uh, step by step. This is actually very similar to what the UN does to prevent conflict. That is not different to what the United Nations itself does. But we're going to have a look at some of the differences between this, which failed, and the United Nations, which succeeded. Some of the weaknesses of the League of Nations. Okay, it had no military forces of its own. Now, neither does the UN. But what the UN does have is the um, the requirement to provide the funding or peacekeepers. It does. The UN has, um, but countries are required to provide it. The League of Nations did not have this. The UN it doesn't actually have its own UN forces. They're actually. British, American, Chinese, um, Cuban, Argentinian, Brazilian, Australian forces under the UN um, administration. But they're not actually UN forces. And they're provided by individual nation states. So it lacked the ability to enforce military sanctions. Okay, so that's problem number one. It doesn't have follow through. It had a lack of ability to fully enforce everything that it had. Um, next up, we have these three countries, the USA, Germany, and Russia. They weren't members. No. Those of you who need some a uh, uh, bit of a history lesson, USA, Germany, Russia, uh, Britain, um, they were the big countries at the time. The Germany big weren't powers. allowed to join the league. They weren't allowed. So the USA, they weren't a member because the US didn't want to join. The US Congress didn't. Um, this was despite the US president being a key backer of the League of Nations. So the president wanted to join, but the US Congress did not. Germany, on the other hand, they were just not allowed to join because they were an aggressor nation. I mean, Russia was prevented from joining because of the fear of communism. Okay, so three of the biggest okay. powers of the time were not allowed to join. Are they, are they members now? They're, they're all members of the United Nations, yes. No, um, the, uh, the League of Nations no longer exists. So it failed. So I'm going to tell you right up front. The League of Nations failed, and we're going to learn about why. So I'm seeing some of the limitations already a lack of its own military forces or the ability to raise military forces and pay for them, a lack of membership by key countries, okay, if the key world powers aren't members, that is a problem. But there were more issues, okay, the colonies were generally not members either, the European colonial masters were, and we can see here, you guys have this in um, black and white, um, so please have a look at the, the colour image here. You can see the, um, the blue here, colonies of members, is most of Africa. So most of Africa were not members of the League of Nations. You had here in orange, joined later, but also left later, and uh, joined later and stayed till the end. They were not members at the start. So countries like Mexico, Finland, Turkey, uh, Russia, Germany, they were not members at the beginning. Some of them joined later on and then left when it was clear that uh, it wasn't going to be um, effective. And then you had some other countries uh, that were members. But look at Africa, look at that Southeast Asia as well. They were never members of the League of Nations. Hmm. And at the start, the US, Germany, and Russia were not. Um, any questions about this map or the League of Nations so far? What does it matter if Africa and Asia are part of it? Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, so do you need them to be members well? No, the colonial masters are members, but this raises the question of can you have true representation when the colonial, uh, colonial countries aren't members? Sorry? Sorry? Question? World War was a European The World War? World War I was a European? It was, but you did, there was conflict in Southeast Asia as well, there was conflict in Africa. Um, German colonies were attacked by allied countries, so... Or it wasn't as big as World War II, but in World War I, you did see um, conflict in Africa uh, and in the Pacific. Um, just not as much as in World War II. 
Um, but that was a problem of the League of Nations, that it lacked the big powers, and it also lacked membership of uh, colonies. Okay. Um, that said, the League of Nations did have a number of successes, so let's have a look at some of them. Um, they tended to be minor conflicts between smaller countries, and this might tell you something about why it failed. It did have successes. Were the successes big? Were the successes um, involving major powers? No, they were not. There were things like the, the Island Islands, Upper Silesia, Memel. Turkey is probably the biggest one here. Greece and Bulgaria as well. Sorry? Um, I, I hadn't either. So these are, these are regions in, in Europe generally, but they don't involve you know, large standing armies, large European powers, they're mainly very small ones. Um, this is a cartoon, some of you who do modern history may have seen this one. Um, it's the idea that you've got all of these countries that are members, but not the USA. So the Keystone member of the USA is refusing to be a member. That was a big thing that held back the League of Nations. That's so selfish. It was, well, that's, um, President Woodrow Wilson actually wanted to be a member, yeah. but it was the Congress that refused to allow it. Uh, so what were the League of Nations failures? And this, I would argue, was actually a much bigger failure than the successes were a success. Um, so you need to have a look at that. So what were some of the large conflicts? Um, Italy, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Teschen and Vilna, Russia and Poland, the invasion of the Ruhr in Germany, Italy and Albania. Again, you're seeing very large countries, European powers. These were the conflicts it failed to prevent. It's the small conflicts that it managed to succeed in preventing. So when you look at this, to what extent was the League of Nations successful? You have to go up and say, look, it had its successes, but they were small and minor conflicts. Yeah, and it's they failures. weren't resolved, and they could have been bigger. Um, if they... But if they weren't resolved, they could have, like, went to... Yeah, it could have been a bigger, the, the bigger disaster, a bigger failure, but the fact is, even its successes were small. Its failures were large. And this is what you have to understand about the history of world order and why the, um, the League of Nations...